Congratulations! You've made it to the third episode. How does that make you feel? You've likely watched two entire episodes of this game previously, and now you're here for the third episode. You're in it for the long haul. You want to see this through to the end, and to that I commend you, but I have to take away that commendation again for the degeneracy that plagues all of us every day in this community. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my furry protogen. In the last episode, we made Juno a little bit angry uh, because she found out we lied about not being the chosen one. I'm hoping we can patch things up because I really like Juno and I don't want to see her angry. So we're going to see if we can do that in this episode. You lied to me, didn't you? You don't know anything about your planet. I froze no longer trailing behind her. My heart sank into my heels. My face turned bright red and I didn't know what to answer with. I, well, what makes you think that? Because it's impossible not to know about freaking giant worms if you know the whole planet like the back of your hand. You know, turn to me, an angry expression on her helmet. I hesitated. What could I say? After all, she was right. I had no idea I was putting us both in danger. Rael, tell me the truth. Yes, you're right. You're 100% right. I don't know much about nature, or even much about the planet as a whole. I've never left my village. Juno looked at me in surprise and then growled furiously. She kicked a large stone with her foot and it flew off in the other direction. Oh my god, the power of those legs, Juno. Please. I know you're angry at me, but please let me explain. Why did you lie to me? She'd have said right away, am I your babysitter? I needed a guide, not a liability, and you don't know anything. I couldn't tell, otherwise you wouldn't have taken me. That's right. I wouldn't take you and wouldn't be responsible for your life. But I had to leave. What else was I supposed to do? You came out of nowhere and you said you were from another planet and I just, I was confused. Don't lie to me, Rael. You didn't get confused. You decided to play traveler and took advantage of me, but I'm not your babysitter. I thought you were an experienced person. I thought you knew everything about your planet, but what did you turn out to be? A huge pile of stones around my neck. And if you died yesterday, what would I do? What would I say to you in your village? What's the difference? I'm alive. Not the way to go, dude. Just say you're sorry. Just explain yourself. Tell her you are the chosen one. Stop fighting. <laughs> you are alive thanks to me. Juno stamped her foot in anger. She was breathing heavily and the face on her helmet turned bright red with unfiltered rage. Sorry, Juno. I'm sorry. I really am. I didn't mean to lie. I just... Just what? Why did you end up by the river if you never left the village? Why did you ask to come with me? What do you want, Rael? I bit my lip, sighing heavily. I sat down on a fallen log and dropped my head in my hands. He's finally gonna say it! Do you remember how I told you about the boy who became the chosen one? Allegedly, the mother of heaven chose him, and I remember, so what? So what does that have to do with it? This boy is me. I was three years old when the elders told me that I had a great destiny, and my life was predetermined by the mother of heaven. Oh, there's that curiosity. I piqued her interest that she had a mission for me, and that's why I was sent here. According to the prophecy, I was supposed to become the ruler of the Northern Valley in the future, become a savior, and cope with some terrible threat. I never had a choice, you know? I was raised as a chosen one. I was treated as a chosen one, and not as a simple person. Even my parents called me the chosen one and savior every day, not by name. Everything was forbidden to me. I ate according to a schedule. My day was scheduled by the minute. I wasn't allowed to read what I wanted, do what I wanted, or go where I wanted. I lived there as a pet, and so on my 20th birthday, I couldn't do it anymore. I spoke in front of the whole village. I had to prepare a speech for every birthday, and this time I just... I expressed everything that boiled over. That there was no mother of heaven, that there is no destiny, and in general, I don't believe in all this. I said it in front of everyone, in front of the elders, in front of their parents. They almost shoved me to the healers. They would definitely lock me in the house and just wait for the threat to come, but it might never come. And I would spend my whole life within four walls like some kind of decoration, not a person. So I ran away. I just ran through the woods until I was exhausted. I didn't know what to do. I asked myself, where would I go now? In the forest, I would just die alone. And to go back to the village, this was, well, a voluntary surrender for my whole life. And I don't want that kind of life, Juno. I want to live like a normal person. I want to travel, see the world. Then you showed up, said you needed a guide, and I decided that this was my chance. And now I could escape and no one would find me. That I would see the world and you would help me with this. Well, I'd help you and you'd help me. I didn't mean any harm, Juno, honestly. I just wanted to become your friend. Oh, shit! No, 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 she's crying. Ah, no, don't cry. Ah, damn it. And all it took, all it took was explaining ourselves. No. Why am I so invested in a smut dating game? Sorry I lied to you, but I really like traveling with you. Never been friends with anyone. I've never had anyone. I understand if you want me to leave, but I would like to stay with you. I've never had such a great time with anyone, and... 
Thank you for saving me yesterday. If it wasn't for you, I would really be gone. You know? You okay? Darling? Honey bun? Hot pocket? Juno sighed, walked over, and sat down next to me on a log. I don't need friends, Rael. That's why I travel alone, so as to not make friends. Why? I thought we were... You know, I thought you enjoyed hanging out with me. Yes, I did, and I do. It's great. Even fun and interesting to be with you, but I don't need it. My heart. My heart. My heart. Don't do this to me, Juno. Don't do this to me, Juno. I thought we had some... I thought what we had was special! That is, well, I can't. I shouldn't get attached to anyone. It's fraught with consequences. What consequences? Sorry, Rael. I also lied to you. What? I actually had a friend. My very best friend. We met on one of the planets I was exploring. His name was Toshi. He was my guide on that planet, but we got along so well that he also became my friend. There was nothing keeping him on the planet. He had neither relatives nor friends, so he decided to fly with me. We traveled together for a long time, lived side by side, and helped each other, and then... Well, on one of the planets we fell into a trap, and Toshi... Juno paused, her voice trembling. I pursed my lips, already realizing what had happened to Toshi. When Toshi died, there was nothing I could do, and even if I could, I didn't do anything. I just didn't have time. I only managed to make my own way out. He urged me to leave, said I shouldn't even think about staying with him, and that I had to leave, otherwise we would have died together. Why I gotta tug at my heartstrings, man? Why I gotta do this? Why I gotta tug? Ah! Oh god, why did this story get so sad suddenly? Ah! For a while, it seemed to me that it would have been better if I had died with him. There wouldn't be this constant feeling of guilt that's always with me, no matter what I do. And it can't be fixed. Toshi can't be returned. When I came to my senses, I vowed never to make any friends again. That's a really bad reason to not make friends, Juno! Open your heart! Open your arms and let me in! Let me give you a big hug! But with you... It's really great to be with you, just like with Toshi, but in a different way, of course. And when you showed up, I realized how lonely I've been all this time, but I can't get attached, you know? I can't let it happen, because then I might lose it again. I just can't face it again. What would have happened if I hadn't saved you yesterday? I would have died. Exactly! Right in front of my eyes. And when I saw you lying there, and this worm was ready to devour you, I fell into a stupor. It was as if Toshi appeared before my eyes, and history was repeating itself. Why did this... Why did this get so sad? I don't want to cry. Why are you making me cry? I don't know by what miracle I managed to pull myself together and help you. I don't want to lose a friend again, you know? It's too hard. You can't be alone all your life. Juno looked at me with a sad face. I didn't know how she felt. I had never lost any friends. I didn't have any friends at all in the first place. And I could only imagine how scary it was to carry such a burden and to blame myself every day. But at the same time, I knew that no one had to blame themselves every day. It was too hard to live with such a load. You can't control who you get attached to, and if that happened, maybe you should have. Juno smiled sadly. Fate? I chuckled, realizing her words. Something like that. You know, I'm sure Toshi wouldn't want you to be alone for the rest of your life and not let anyone near you. What would he say to you now if he heard all this? Oh, there's that smile! There's that cute smile! There's that happy girl! Oh my god! Dude, it bro- it breaks my heart to see her sad. Never let that happen again. Oh my god. I didn't have any friends because no one wanted to be friends with me. Well, everyone wanted to be friends with the Chosen One, not with me. And you don't have any friends because you're afraid to make them. I think we're cut from the same cloth. Maybe you're right. I will try to help you, Juno. I promise. We can be friends for now, you know. Get used to each other, and if we become best friends, then so be it. I held out my hand to Juno. She looked at it with an incomprehension in her eyes, but apparently quickly remembered what it meant. All right, let everything go as it goes, then we'll see, right? The next day! Oh man, that's that's it! I got my Juno back! 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 Let's go, man! <laughs> The further we moved across the planet, the closer Juno and I got. I felt that it was easy, right? And good for me with Juno. As if it was supposed to happen. As if we were supposed to meet. It seemed like we had known each other for a long time, and we just hadn't seen each other for many years, but now we had finally found our way to each other again. Our journey ran through the whole world, and I didn't even know how big it really was. Of course, for Juno, our planet was tiny, but for me, it was a boundless expanse. More and more, I began to think about asking Juno to travel through space with her when her research on our planet was over. Maybe she'd never agree 
agree to it. I couldn't imagine how I could possibly forget how I could leave our friendship, our communication, our heart-to-heart -heart conversations behind my shoulders. From time to time, I dreamed that the village was completely destroyed, burned in a fire as soon as I left. The prophecy came true and it was my fault. Juno and I moved further north on the planet and soon found ourselves in vast expanses of hills and sparse forests. Oh, look at her! She's so cute! Hi! Hi, Miss Juno. <laughs> I feel like a school kid who's like, found his crush in the hallway and I go to poker and run away like, ah! <laughs> Hi, Miss Juno! You're looking very cute today! You wanna hold hands? As soon as we got out of the jet, a strange smell hit our noses. It smelled like rot or long dead meat. We looked at each other and I realized that Judo had also smelled it. What is it that stinks so much? Uh-oh. I don't know, maybe something died nearby? We went further along the path into the forest. I began to look closely at the trees and shrubs around us. Now the leaves of the trees and shrubs were covered with strange red dots and lines. It seemed that all the greenery had withered, but why? Should it be this way? I approached Chuno, who was holding several wrinkled blackened leaves in her hands. No, it definitely shouldn't be like this. They're like, wilted. But it's too early for that. The weather is good. Winter isn't coming soon. Why did this happen? I'll take samples. I think we need to find out what kind of disease this is. Uh-oh, the prophecy's true! Do you think it's some kind of infection? This can't be an accident. Look at the forest. It's all like this, even the grass. What do you mean? Have you seen something like this before? Not sure, maybe not. You can find out what it is, right? I will try, Rael, I promise. The whole forest smelled of rot, something heavy and dead. Juno's helmet had the same worried expression on it that I had. We need to get out of here. I don't like it. What? Do you think it's dangerous? Maybe. It seems to me that at that moment, an animal's cry was heard from somewhere in the depths of the forest. It was frantic, desperate. The animal was struggling in agony. Oh man, is the whole like area being affected by this right now? Oh, she's got a gun. God, I love it when she pulls that gun out, man. She's such a fucking badass. God, she's actually like a lot. She's really, hey, uh, like it's weird to say. She's kind of like sexy. I'm not gonna lie. Juno and I exchanged glances and, without a word, ran towards the sound. In the middle of the clearing where we found ourselves, there was a three horn, and it was a large, once beautiful animal with five hooves and three horns on its head. What the hell? Its eyes, usually yellow, had turned white and black blood flowed from its mouth. Jesus! It smelled like a corpse, like rotten meat, as if the three horn had long since died, although we saw it convulsing. What happened to it? What's wrong? I don't know. We need to run some tests and find out. We're not taking it to Pixie, are we? Juno shook her head empathetically. Of course not. If that's what I'm thinking about, what are you thinking about? I would really like to know. This is my planet after all. I'll take samples. Juno squatted down in front of the three horn. She reached from the back viscous pool of blood and took a sample on a special stick. Let's get out of here. I'll tell you everything as soon as we get to the jet. It's not safe here. My heart was clenching in my chest with fear. What happened to this forest? What happened to this animal? Why did Juno react like that? I think Juno's seen that before. When we were in the jet, Pixie greeted us with a standard greeting, but immediately said, Juno, I must warn you, there is an unknown virus on the ship. I know, Pixie. We brought it. We need to understand what it is. Uh-oh! Virus? I mean, like the flu? It's hardly that harmless. You saw what happened to that tree horn. Ooh! Wait! There's lore? There's, sto there's like an actual in-depth story to what's going on here. So, a virus on the planet causing rotten decay killing things off is it like an extinction level event kind of situation is it somebody that hates uh life and is trying to destroy life on inhabited planets i followed juno to her lab you promised to tell me what it is rael i you promised if this is some kind of disease i want to know how dangerous it is for the planet and how it can be stopped listen i don't really understand it myself it's i think it's some kind of virus and if i'm right we need to inform your village urgently if this virus is as serious as i think it is it will spread all over the planet oh this is giving me subnautica vibes juno don't tell me that we need to find out if there's a chance to stop it, where it came from, and is if there is a chance, it's possible there isn't one? Rael, I'm not a magician. Yes, I'm a scientist, but this does not mean that I can do everything. It may not work out, and then we will need to figure out what to do. Promise that you will tell me everything when you find out something. Of course, Rael. Go get some rest. Chat with Pixie. Oh, man, this is getting tense. I'm not gonna lie. I'm on the edge of my butt. This is pretty cool. This is pretty interesting. This is good. The plot thickens just like Juno. For several hours, I restlessly roamed around the jet and tried to occupy myself with something, but to no avail. At some point, I fell into a chair and even managed to take a nap, but the restless surface didn't last long. Oh, Juno, stop crying, please. It's gonna be bad news and I don't wanna hear bad news right now. 
You know, came out of the lab, and from the look of her, I understood she didn't have any good news. Well, did you find out anything? Something. Pixie, keep an eye on the lab. Yes, Juno. Will you tell me? I think it's a virus, and this virus is very dangerous. Judging by what I've managed to find out at the moment, it spreads very quickly through the air and through touch. It kills carriers and remains in already dead organisms for a while. I tried to kill the virus with colder heat, but the effects of temperatures don't cause it any harm. Listen, Rael, I don't want to scare you, but I think it's very serious. You need to return home immediately. Our journey is over. I assume that it can be stopped somehow, and I will try to do everything I can to help your planet. I gripped the arms of the chair, feeling my heart pounding in my chest. It was beating faster with every word Juno said. No, wait, what are you talking about? What do you mean I have to go back? What about you? I'm going back to my ship. This jet is only part of the ship. The ship itself is waiting for me in orbit. There I have more devices, more tools. I can try to create a cure. And you should be with your loved ones. And no, no way. What are you talking about? Do you know this is my planet, my house? And if it's in danger, I'm not going to sit idly by. I will help you in any way I can. It will be much better if there were two of us. Rael, it can be very dangerous. What if you get infected? Or what if you get infected? Juno was silent for a couple moments, but then she shook her head. Still, you'd better go back. I don't want to be constantly distracted by worries about you. I don't want to let it happen again. I sighed, immediately realizing where those worries were going from. Juno frowned, turning away from me again. You know, nothing will happen to me, and if it does, that will mean you couldn't have prevented it. I won't be much better off at home anyway than with you. If the virus is spreading so fast, then my village may be in danger, but this virus won't be able to get on your ship. You know, was silent, apparently trying to decide how to proceed. I reached out and squeezed her hand in mine, and at that moment, I felt a wave of heat radiate throughout my body. Oh, they're hold we're holding hands. I'm holding hands. I'm holding hands with Juno. I'm holding hands. I'm holding hands with Juno. <laughs> Oh my god! That's right! I'm not going anywhere, Juno! You've got me! You can always count on me, Juno! I'll do my best! And if we fail, what then? Juno drooped even more, but her hand squeezed mine in response. Her warm, thin fingers gently squeezed mine. For a moment, my heart skipped the beat. Oh my god, we're in third base already! Then we will think about what to do next, okay? We will solve the problems as they occur. I smiled at her encouragingly. Juno was silent for a few moments, squeezing my hand, and then gave up. Fine, you're probably right. Pixie, let's go to the ship. We need to decide what to do with all this. Yo! I'm going on a trip to my girlfriend's rocket ship. She's a protogen! Ha -da 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 -da. The next day! Actually, this could be like a minute from now. Oh, we're on the ship! Let's go! I have to confess something. I turned to Juno, who is sitting in the big captain's chair. What? You see, I came to your planet for a reason. The last few years, I've been chasing some kind of anomaly. It was like it was moving through space. I don't know how, but it was jumping from planet to planet. Every time I arrived at those planets, there was no one and nothing left to help. Even the virus was already dead. My sensors detected that the anomaly was approaching your planet, but I was hoping that it would bypass you. However, as you can see, this didn't happen. Didn't you say that this disease might not be dangerous for humans? I was hoping for that. A virus can't be dangerous for all creatures, only for a small number of species. There were no humans or large animals on previous planets and I'd hoped that the virus was killing only plants and small animals, but it turns out this isn't the case. But if the virus can't be dangerous for every species, why then? It can't kill everything unless it's artificially created. It's a bioengineered virus. Why? What's the point? Wait a second. Okay. I know that later on in this game, there's like pr hot protogen action going on, but you have this subplot of a virus? And it's actually kind of cool? I froze, frowning and barely digesting Juno's words. What do you mean? That someone created this virus and perhaps created it specifically for your galaxy, but I don't know who or why. I, what, what did we do? We're just a budding society. We're, we're a growing society. We need our vegetables. We, ate our, we eat our Wheaties every morning. Why us? And I don't know if I'm right. We need more samples, more materials. So this anonymous, so this anonymous, so this anom so so this anomaly is now on my planet. Yes, but I don't know if this is a living creature that infects everything around or a clot of energy. Maybe it's some kind of object, a fragment of a stone. You know where it is? Yes, but you can't go there like this. You need to first create some kind of protection, perhaps develop immunity. And for that, we need more samples. 
then you need to collect samples. That's what we're gonna do, okay? Juno feigned a smile and nodded. She got up, came to me, and we stood in front of a huge window. You're right, Rael. We will work together. I promise that I will try to do everything in my power to help you and your planet. I won't give up. I'll do everything I can. I give you my word. We were standing opposite each other. I felt my heart filled with warmth just from looking at Juno, from her voice, from the faint smile depicted on her helmet. I've never experienced something like this. Such engagement, such support. At some point, it seemed to me that I just had to hug her. That's what I did. I leaned forward and hugged Juno tightly to me. Oh, we get a hug! Yes! Yeah! My face is at the perfect height for this! She froze, not immediately realizing what was happening, and then hugged me back, folding her hands around my neck. We stood like this for several long minutes. Folding her hands around my neck, that means she is that tall. Oh shit, let's go! <laughs> the thought was sudden, bright as a shooting star, and I'd never wanted anything so much. My heart started beating faster, and I hugged Juno even tighter. I wish I could stand here with her forever, snuggled up to each other, and not think about anything, leaving all my problems in the past. Thank you, Juno. I whispered these words into her ear. Juno pulled me closer to her, burying her face in my shoulder. And at that moment, I realized that I was completely hopelessly in love with her. There it is! Let's go! I'm not crying. You're crying. I'm not. This is... This is all I ever wanted! The next day... We were collecting samples. Juno had given me a huge, strange suit that was a little too big for me and didn't let me out of the jet without it. Collecting samples wasn't easy. Most of the animals infected with the virus became extremely aggressive before death. It seemed that the virus was simply driving its carriers crazy. Standing over the corpses of the animals, I thought about how to stop it all. On the ship, I spent more and more time hanging around Juno in the lab, trying to learn something at least. The connection between Juno and I was getting stronger every day. I couldn't imagine an hour without her. We spent all our free time together chatting about all sorts of things, trying to destroy distract ourselves from heavy thoughts. The longer it lasted, the more deeply I fell in love with Juno. Sometimes it seemed that this feeling was so strong, so huge, that it would soon run out of space and be cramped within my chest. That's right. I bet you forgot we were playing a dating simulator, didn't you? At some point, there's gonna be some protogen ramming, if you know what I mean. Juno will get the ram. Mark my words. One evening, we were sitting opposite each other after a long, hard day. Why do you want to help our planet so much? What do you mean? Well, I'm just curious. I mean, our planet is probably just one of many for you. Why do you want to help us so badly? Juno was silent for a few moments. She was looking out of the huge windows in which the boundless dark of space was visible. Oh no, I just want to help. And I want to help you. You are a great human, Rael, and I'm very glad that you have become my friend. Thank you, and I'm really glad I found you too. That we met. My heart was beating very fast in my chest. I suddenly thought now was the time to say. It was about time because there may not be a better moment. Oh, he's gonna do it! Oh, he's gonna do it! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna say it! I never thought I'd meet someone like you. That is, I didn't even hope, to be honest. You know, looked at me with a puzzled expression on her face. What are you talking about? Well, I mean that. Damn. Turns out it's not so easy to say it. Say what? What do you mean, Rael? I shifted in my chair, gathering my thoughts. I couldn't turn back. I'd already started. Just, well, I've never felt this way, but I think, I mean, I'm pretty sure that Miss Juno, I love you. Please crush my head with your thighs. I must have looked terribly awkward, red with embarrassment, with a nervous look that dashed around the room. A reddish blush was reflected on Juno's helmet. Oh, oh that's so cute. Rael, are you... Are you sure? Yes, absolutely. I think I fell in love with you almost immediately. I just realized later. Never been in love with anyone. Damn how difficult this is. I've never fallen in love with anyone, but I'm sure I'm in love with you. How can you be so sure if you've never been in love? I shrugged my shoulders. I don't know. I just felt that way. That's all. I can't help myself. I've always been so afraid to get attached, especially after Toshi, but now? I don't know why, but I... I feel it for you too, Riel. I want to be near you. I want to help you. I don't know why it happened, but... She timidly fell silent, and I, feeling my heart flutter, whispered... Destiny, right? Ah, yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, it's happening. It's happening. I'm gonna get... Ah, blah, blah. I got the... Blah, blah. Ah, <laughs> yes! Juno laughed softly. Right. After that, everything happened by itself. What's with the music? What's with the music? Wait, what's with the music? Hey, um, um, 
I don't remember how close we got to each other, but Juno snuggled up to me and I to her. At that moment, everything, every action we did felt so right that I didn't focus on the specifics of it. Just touching her, my intuition told me what to do. I caressed Juno, my body quickly filled with heat, responding to every touch. I felt how tight my pants were getting. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Okay, I don't think I can show this part. Wait a second. Oh my God. Oh my God. My face is so red right now. Oh my God. Juno. Oh my Juno. Oh my Juno. Oh my God. Ah! Oh my God. I can't read any of this. I'm so flustered right now. This is all I wanted. I really hope I'm not streaming this. Oh my God. I'm looking over at OBS like every 10 seconds. Just like, is it streaming? Is it streaming? Is it streaming? Dude, I'm blushing so hard. I am fucking blushing so hard. A few moments later. Wait, has Pixie seen us all this time? You know, laughed out loud when she heard the undisguised shame in my voice. What just happened? Oh my god! Um... Um... I... I think I... Oh, <laughs> that will never see the light of day as a video on YouTube! That whole section not going in the video! Oh my god, it finally happened! Alright, anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, that was definitely an experience. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm never uploading what I just saw in there. Jesus! <laughs> I'm so blushy. I'm sweating out of just being flustered and embarrassed. My my cheeks hurt from smiling. I oh. <laughs> Anyway, that's all the time I have for this video. Thank you everybody so much for watching. As always, I am Rail the Protogen and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye everybody. Wagga 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 wagga.